In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a very, very important tip out of the bunch tight end. This is going to help you win more mutt games. These routes are going to help open everything up. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become better Madden 21 players. And so if you want to get better at this game every single day, I post videos that will help you get better on offense and on defense. And so if you have not clicked the subscribe button yet, I want to encourage you to do that. It's completely free to subscribe. Now, in this video, like I said, I want to talk specifically about the bunch tight end offense. And if you have not already gotten my bunch uh, tight end offensive guide. I have a full Jets playbook guide that breaks down the bunch, the bunch tight end, and the trips tight end offset. As you can see here, these are three of the best formations in the entire game. And so if you want to get those, you can get those in the description of this video. Now, in this video, like I said, we're talking specifically about routes that can open everything up. So what do you do when you the main thing that you do is taken away? Well, that's what we talk about. We call it constraint theory plays. And what a constraint theory play is, is it's basically something that you can call consistently that is going to open up your power play or your counter play. So your top two plays in this playbook, in my opinion, are tight end corner and PA boot over. It's basically a, a right side flood and a left side flood. And so what we need to do is strategically open up them, open up those routes with different routes of our own or different setups of the same play. And so the audibles you want to have set are X spot and mesh. We're going to go over those two plays in this video and we're going to come out and PA boot over. So first things first, I just want to show you and kind of share with you a little bit about what people have to do to stop it. So if we go to, with a traditional Mabel coverage here, uh, what you're going to see is this Mabel coverage as it is kind of a traditionally is not going to be able to stop it. As you can see right here, that route's going to be open. That crosser is going to be very consistent for you. You have the, the, the delay fade as well to the tight end. Another thing that you have in this is the ability to burn cover three. So if you just simply streak the tight end and streak the left of screen outside slot receiver, you're going to see that we're going to be able to beat cover three. That's one of my favorite cover three beaters in the entire game. As you can see right here, I mean, it's pretty easy to beat cover three. The problem is whenever you start playing mutt and people start to have better corners on the outside, a lot of the corners end up playing similarly to the way Jair Alexander plays. So, for example, if I ran that same Mabel coverage defense, right, um, if I ran that same exact defense that I was running against P.A. over, you'll find that it becomes a lot better when everyone has, you know, 99 zone and everything like that. You'll see that this outside third will kind of drift, and that right there is exactly the issue that we want to solve in this video. And so real quick, I wanna give you one other, like if you're facing cover three a lot, I wanna give you one other beater for that. Now you do need to be on the left hash or you just need to make sure that your bunch is to the short side of the field. And so if they're running a lot of Mike Bloods three, and I'll tell you what, like I've been playing uh, weekend league a lot this weekend. I'm undefeated so far, but every single person that I run into is basically running Mike Blitz 3 as an actual cover 3 defense, which in my opinion is not the way you want to run it. But anyway, what you'll see right here is he'll beat him to the inside, as you can see. Um, the one issue is if that corner obviously does play it. So the way that you can get yourself some better spacing on that, let me show you what I what I can uh, what you can do. So if you want to get better spacing on the play inside switch, all we're doing is we're streaking the triangle receiver. That's it. But if we motion um if we motion the square receiver out, we're going to get a little bit more spacing. It's still going to solve the same thing. You'll see that that little middle third will glitch out, and you can kind of fit it in that in that little window there. Now, if you want, you can also do it. There's a couple other things you can do to get this route open. This is honestly, I think this, especially in mutt, is probably the better of the two uh, cover three beaters, just because of the spacing um, that allows you to have. You're going to see right here. You know, we're going to get into something like that. But, you know, one of the biggest issues, as you can see, is, is sometimes that corner will will play it. Sometimes he won't. That's like the weird the weirdness of this cover three bomb. And, and that's the weirdness and the glitchiness, I think, of, of cover three in this year's game. But another thing that you can do if you want to is you can take this circle receiver and streak him and flat route the triangle receiver. That's going to get him a little bit more to the middle. And as you'll see right here, and of course, I, I kind of messed up on my bomb. But anyway... That, that route will beat cover three. We're not going to spend too much more time on it. I'm going to run it one more time and just show it to you. Um, and if it beats cover three, it, it's great. But in mud, this thing will kill cover three. Um, I must be doing something wrong with the setup. Maybe I got a smart route, though, square receiver. I don't know. But, but anyway, you'll see the circle receiver normally 
right there, that's what we're looking for. And that's exactly what we're looking for right there. So you see, it does beat cover three. Just smart route the square receiver. You have to be on the short side of the field for that to work. But what I want to talk about in this video is what do you do after they start to adjust to all of that stuff, right? And that's going to leave them with this basic uh, cocktail within their zone drops that you're going to see that they're going to move into a zone drop that's more of something like this right here. They're going to have 30-yard or flat zones, 5-yard and 5-yard uh, hook, hook zones. So this is where those constraint theory plays will really start coming in handy, and we're going to show you how to do that uh, right here, right now. So uh, it doesn't matter which hash you're on, honestly. I mean, it, it can, I mean, a little bit, but it really doesn't, like, make the biggest difference for a constraint theory play. It's mainly for, like, bombs and stuff. So what they're gonna have to start doing, and this is what they'll probably do, is they'll probably deep half on this right side, and then they'll probably honestly leave the outside third on the left. Um, now real quick, if they do that, that's why I like this play right here, uh, tight end corner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna smart route the circle receiver, just like that. We're gonna streak the X receiver, which is the tight end. And then I like to take the running back, like if I'm in mutt, I'll put him on like a flat route. If I'm in regs, I'll just put him on a little option route, just like that. And then on this left side, I'm just going to run a simple little curl flat concept. So you'll see it looks kind of like this right here. Um, you could run him on a hitch if you want to, uh, that circle or that square. But you'll see right here that this is an easy laser. I mean, that's an easy little dot against cover three. It's really good against cover three. It's also good, like, for example, one of the things that you'll find that a lot of people like to do against bunch tight end is people will definitely, definitely begin to, like, overplay uh, they'll begin to overplay like the crossing routes and things like that. So they may sit in something like this right here where they have, you know, a little bit better outside protection to defend the crossing route. Well, that's where this tight end corner play really does, uh, I think, a great job. So there's multiple ways in which you can run this, but the easiest way is this right here. Um, and you see here I'm streaking the tight end. So there's the route comment that I talked about. And even with the flat zones being a little bit, you know, even being more outside and being in a cover two, if those flat zones are on 30 to 25 yards, you're going to be pretty successful at, at consistently hitting this read. Now, the one problem that I've ran into more so on mud than I have on regs, and I think a lot of it has to do um, with the fact that I'm using RG3 and Mutt, and RG3 does not have like the pass lead ability that Aaron Rodgers has in regs. So I'm thinking about switching back to Brett Favre, but basically this throw right here, I found that this throw is not as open in Mutt, um, this little outside little pattern right here, that route right there is not as open in Mutt as it is in regs. So that's where I like to go to this other play that I have, and um, it's the X spot. So whenever they start to do those specific types of zone drives, and you kind of know that they're probably in cover three, but you know if they're not in cover three and they're putting like a deep half out there, you know you got to be careful. But cover that deep half is going to help against cover three bombs. So if they're doing that, that's why I really like this X spot play, and I literally run this almost exactly like flood. So we're just going to fade the square receiver. And then from that point right there, you can do whatever you want on the right side. If you want, you can do a double streak. Um, if you want to do that, you can. Um, if you want to do a curl and a, a wheel route, you can. Uh, those are all different options. You know, you can do all of these things. But anyways, I want you to watch this triangle receiver. So these are with those standard zone drops. And you're going to see that he's going to get underneath that 30-yard flat zone. As you can see right there, he gets in a really nice little spot underneath it. It's also good to the short side. It might even be just a little bit better to the short side. These, like, shorter corner routes are sometimes a little bit better to that side. So, again, I want to just run more of, like, a traditional Michaelis 3 just so you you can see this is kind of one of the plays that I've been really running as of late. Uh, it's been really successful for me. So again, just it's a simple low ball right there. Um, as you can see, easy dot and uh, easy read. Now, if their flats are on 10 yards, you're not going to be able to hit that. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to hit the flat or you're going to need to, um, you know, work the backside combination. But I'll tell you guys, um, you know, one of the things that I'm finding in Mutt is that you need some of these little constraint three plays a little bit more because a lot of people are going to be prepared. Plus, they have such good players. Um, but you do need to know, like, what works. So one other little constraint three play, this is really good out of PA boot over. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put the square receiver on a little curl. We're going to put the R1 receiver on a little uh, in route. And then we're going to streak the tight end just like this. 
Now, if you wanted to, um, there's some other things that you could do to make this even a little bit better, but this is what we're going to do for this video. So you see, this is what we're rolling with. Now, um, what you're going to notice here is that almost always, if they're running some type of Mike Blitz 3, this running back route is going to get wide open underneath. They're not going to think to use it. They're going to think their hard flat is going to take it. Normally, their hard flat doesn't take it. Okay, just from my experience, normally he's not going to take it. But the beauty of this play is you still have some really good routes on this right side, right? They still have to worry about this crosser. And if they're not going to defend the crosser, then you can hit that crossing route as well. So anyways, those are a couple of constraint theory plays, plays that are designed to take advantage of the defense when the defense starts to over pursue. If you're playing mutt and people are shutting you down and bunch tight in, I think these are some of the things that you need to work on uh, and maybe add into your arsenal. Thank, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to get my entire bunch tight bunch tight end uh, guide. It comes with the, the entire Jets guide. It comes with bunch tight end bunch as well as uh, trip tight end offset. You can get that in the description. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you guys later.